Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our analyst briefing. This is the first one we are having this year, and we'll be covering the uh, company economy and the fertilizer industry for the year 2022. Uh, we'll start with a recap. The company's investments in Fuji Meat, Food, Power, and the Bank, along with the joint venture abroad. Uh, our journey since 1993, uh, we're in a business and cultural turnaround phase. Last year, having the highest ever sales uh, and highest ever production in the history of the company. And as a recap, our two products, Sona Urea Granular and DAP, Urea is a prime consumer of power and steam along with natural gas, whereas DAP, the primary composition is phosphoric acid and natural gas. Our capacities. Our strengths happen to be our granular urea, the only ones in the country and the only ones who produce DAP. And we've got backward integration with our joint venture uh, PMP in Morocco. We see our portfolio growth, trading and o &M services as an opportunity. Looking at our weaknesses, gas uh, is the main raw material which we are uh, reliant upon and its availability is, is critical for us. And maintaining the old vintage of the plant is also a challenge climate change and its impact on the farmer, the farm economics and the produce is what we see as a threat. And then the, uh, our reliance on foreign exchange availability and energy are the areas which we see as a threat. Coming to the economic highlights, the last year was, was quite eventful. The war in Ukraine resulted in a commodity super cycle. The country saw an inflation of 24%, north of 24%. The policy rate went up to 17%. Rupee devaluated by around 52% year on year. The foreign exchange situation, the floods, and to top it all, the government policies were not helping us at all. Uh, we've seen discrimination in a levy of super tax. We were one of the selected industries who got hit. Uh, GST exemption resulted in GST becoming our cost of production and DAP being priced primarily by imports or import parity. Uh, recovery of GST cost uh, is a challenge for us. And in the end, towards October, uh, at the peak of the season, the farmer kept waiting and expecting uh, a Kisan package with a significant subsidy on DAP. There was a delay even in the end uh, we saw. <clears throat> so we were talking about the GST becoming our cost of production, especially in case of DAP. Uh, and the delay in Kisan package, the wheat price, the government kept trying to have a consensus between the Sindh, Punjab and the federal government prices, which they couldn't achieve till the end. Uh, one of the reasons why farmers did not use DAP prior to sowing of uh, the wheat crop. And we'll see the impact on the DAP market going forward. Next, Karenji. Coming to the fertilizer industry, uh, the market share of FFBL improved by 14% in DAP. Last year, we were at 42% of the market, which has gone up to 56%. The market has declined from 1.9 million tons last year to 1.2, slightly short of 1.2 million tons in 2022 a significant decrease of 38%. Uh, if you look at the, if you compare the, if you look at the fertilizer market by value, DAP happened to be 56% as compared to 44 of urea. 
whereas if you look in volumetric terms the the dab market was around 15% as against 85 of urea in urea the market was pretty stable 6.3 million tons as against 6.6 a 4% increase uh, we managed to retain a market share of around 8% in the urea market Urea has been in high demand and the availability increased, resulting in higher sales, 6.6, .6, whereas DAP is a totally contrast. The market reduced by 38% and it's back to a decade ago when we used to be around 1.2 billion tons back in 2012. And the market ended up, uh, the the industry ended up carrying an inventory of 433,000 tons of inventory into 2023. The factors, major factors which we see uh, impacting the, the market size are the ones which have been described earlier. Uh, the farmers economics, the Kisan package delay, the price going up internationally, the commodity super cycle, all of these factors uh, resulted in an unprecedented decline in the DAP market. Looking at urea internationally, the prices did peak somewhere in March last year, and then it slid down somewhere in July, August, and is settled to 5,400 uh, rupees a bag equivalent, whereas the local prices are around 2,400 in December, which which shows that uh, a significant portion uh, a, that there is a significant subsidy being passed on by the industry to the farmer uh, uh, on account of the subsidized gas we receive it comes to around 3000 rupees a bag uh, looking at the phosphate phosphatic market the market was a bit volatile phosphoric acid uh, did follow the trend of the DAP market. We started the year with around $900 a ton, which went all the way up to $1,030 a ton somewhere in April, uh, June, and July. And then it corrected itself down to $7,750, $760 by the end of the year. The last import we saw in Pakistan was at around $760, which arrived somewhere in November, December. The phosphoric acid prices did follow the same trend. Uh, we, we talked about the market decline, and one of the major reasons we see is the psychological threshold of 10,000 rupees a bag. This threshold, we crossed this in April when the prices uh, moved up north of this, this uh, threshold, and we saw a decline similar to the international prices somewhere during September, October, and up till November. However, the prices have not been able to come down. Uh, the, the major factors then were higher DAP and phosphoric acid prices internationally. And now and going forward, we anticipate that the rupee devaluation is going to take away the advantage we thought we'll receive by uh, reducing international prices. Uh, the settling of the commodities. Uh, coming to FFBL, the challenges we face, the inflation everyone is aware of, uh, around 25% against the last year. The policy rate went up from 6 to 17%. We, our finance cost was around 2.4 billion on net basis. The rupee devaluation hit us in the form of foreign exchange, around 7 billion, and the super tax hit us by 2.8 billion. And the government policies, especially the GST exemption, uh, cost us around 2.5 to 4 billion rupees in the last year. Next. Despite all these challenges, uh, the management did its best to preserve the shareholders' wealth. We've seen a significant growth in the market share uh, from 42 to 
urea was maintained. Despite the foreign exchange uh, shortage and restrictions, we managed to secure our raw material imports and uh, ended up producing enough DAP for, for Pakistan. Uh, the, despite the floods and demand destruction, our top line is ever highest at 159 billion. Our production in urea and DAP combined is ever highest. We managed to sign the GSA with, with SSGC and also enhanced our credit rating from AA to A1. So these were a few achievements. Uh, as against the market decline of 38%, we managed to, to arrest our uh, share declined by 16%. So as against the, the, the industry carrying around 433,000 tons of inventory into next year, we our share was 188,000 tons. So we believe that it's quite an achievement that uh, despite unprecedented circumstances, our marketing team and management managed to, to retain, in fact, managed to enhance the market share Urea was pretty stable, 4% corresponding the market in a tight demand supply situation. Everything we produced was sold. Coming to operational excellence, we received quite a few safety awards. Alhamdulillah, we achieved 34.7 million safe man hours by the end of the year and a few of the international and local safety uh, related awards that we received. Coming to our financial performance, our gross profit stood at 26 billion, our GP was 16%, operating profit 17 billion, our EBITDA was 14.6, profit before tax stood at 8.5 billion, and the tax cost us uh, a profit after tax of 2.3 billion. So I'll, I'll be sharing the major factors in the next slide. Uh, our top line, 159 million billion rupees, ever highest during the year. If you look at the bottom line, we were around 2 billion in 2020. We went up to 6 billion in 21. This is the standalone FFBL accounts. And after tax, 22 was 2.3. If we factor in the, the one-time elements or the ones which were not in management control, we would see that the difference in foreign exchange lost the super tax and the finance cost increment over last year stacked up takes us to around 12.7 billion on an after tax basis. So uh, just to quantify the, the elements and the factors which were not in management control and to, to, to see the real potential of the business had these factors not been in, in, in play during the year. Our debt equity ratio in, improved over 2020, though it's not as good as 21, but uh, it is significantly improved. Our equity is strengthened to 22.7 billion, whereas our net debt has come down to 15 billion as against 13 billion, which we had last time in 2020. Next. Looking at our consolidated results, our gross profit again, ever highest at 35 billion, margin was 19%, operating profit 23%, uh, and profit after tax stood at 8 billion. Our top line was 183 billions, again, ever highest we've seen in the company's history. Despite all the challenges, our consolidated result is uh, bottom line 8 billion as against 9.2 of last year. And if we factor in the super tax, the, the devaluation and the uh, policy rate impact, our actual performance stood at around 19 billion as against 9 of last year. <laughs> On consolidated basis, again, we see strengthening of our, of our equity and improving the debt equity ratio to around 50% uh, as against 65% leverage, which we had during the year 2020. Coming to our subsidiaries, 
uh, FPCL has been consistently profitable. Uh, we've worked significantly towards improving our local coal mix with imported coal, which has uh, arrested the, which has reduced the impact of international coal prices, uh, which has also helped us with our foreign exchange payments and in uh, merit order as well when it comes to the merit order list of K-Electric. For GMEAT, we've been focusing on our capacity utilization. We achieved 26% during the year, cost optimization underway. Uh, losses have been reduced significantly by a quarter. And we are gradually tapping into the export market, uh, especially in the GCC. Coming to Foggy Foods, we've got a very strong revenue growth of 44% in 2022. Uh, there are plans of injection of around 11 billion by the Foggy Group into FFL. The portfolio has been rejected, focuses on high value and high margin products, uh, value adding products along with the regional mix, distribution cost, cost efficiencies, quite a few initiatives underway. Coming to 2023, the outlook with the current economic situation, we are uh, committed to strive and do our best, deliver our best for shareholder value preservation. Uh, regarding the plant dynamics, our plant turnaround has been completed, just been completed a few days ago, and we've received gas from SSGC. The plant has, has restarted last night. Uh, we're focusing on safe operations and business excellence. We continue to focus on our cost effectiveness, efficiencies, and, our, and process optimization. The focus, of, focus on our manpower is going to continue in the next 12 months. Uh, we'll be working with the GOP to, to promote awareness and to promote DAP usage uh, and try to create some balance as against the imbalance which we are seeing right now. People are, farmer is tending to, uh, to use more of nitrogen as against DAP primarily on account of the, the cost difference, urea is being heavily subsidized, and whereas DAP is exposed to international dynamics, whereas the farmer is inclined more towards urea as compared to DAP, which is affecting our crop yields. Uh, the, discrimination, the discrimination we face by the government on account of GST, we are in contact with them and we are pursuing them that, that this cost discrimination against importers is not sustainable. And we would like to, to have some relief on the GST front. Though 22 was a bit, was quite challenging. However, we see 2023 taking off on a positive note. Uh, the recent sales indicate that there'll be a strong demand of DAP going forward. We are in a unique position with our inventory in hand to fulfill the local uh, requirements for the next few months. We foresee farm economics improving with the coming wheat crop uh, being uh, fetching a good price, uh, which will improve the farm economics even beyond what we saw last year. Overall, we see a positive and healthy trend in farm economics, which will which will assist the farmer in using more DAP in the coming seasons. Uh, the super tax and GOP policies, the government appears to be receptive to our demands and our requests regarding the GST. And they have promised us uh, gas availability on a consistent basis. And they are willing to work with us to remove the discrimination which we are facing right now. Uh, the GOP is actively, uh, actively working 
on improving the yields by promoting the usage of DAP. However, we see that unless these uh, the, the subsidy disparity is removed, the farmer will continue to, to place more focus on using nitrogen as compared to DAP. So unless the international prices come down significantly, the rupee devaluation is, is not going to, to help pass on the lower cost impact to the farmer. That's it from our side, and we're open for question and answers. So, wedding room is available. Mr. Thank you for the presentation. I'd like to remind all the participants that if you have any questions, then please use the chat box, and then I'll relay your questions to the management. So, I have received quite a few questions. So, the first question is. What was the contract size of your most recent phosphoric acid shipment and for what period was it for? The fourth quarter price, as we'd flashed, was at $1,175 a metric ton. The first quarter prices have not been concluded with India. Uh, we're having news that uh, some of the deals concluded are at around $1,025 or so. So $125, $250 reduction is what we are expecting this quarter. Thank you. Okay, so how was the profitability of your DAP business uh, in isolation? If you look at the DAP business in isolation. So there's one thing which I would like to highlight that the recent changes made in the PSX uh, rule book they have restricted us to share information which is uh, which is not otherwise public. This is something which was not there. We, I personally felt that the analyst briefings are uh, a public session, but the way we see these rules restrict us from sharing any information which is not out there in public already. So that will be restricting us from answering quite a few questions, I'm afraid. Okay. So is there any reason for the for the dip in cross margins in, uh, in 4Q where it fell to around 12% from 17% to compare quarter on quarter? Sorry, come again? The reason for dip in? The decline in gross margins during Q. No, margin of what? On a year-on-year -year basis? Quarter on quarter basis. It was... 17% in 3Q and 12% in 4Q. Well, the gross margin is, is a big function of the volume sold as well as the phosphoric acid prices in relation to the pricing. You must have seen a, a significant decrease in the selling price of DAP during the fourth quarter, which was one of the reasons that we had a dip in the gross profit margin. Uh, do, I, do you have any expectations for the urea and DAP market going forward given the recent currency devaluation and the LC restriction? Well, as far as the demand is concerned, we expect at the moment we're expecting the demand of DAP to bounce back to around 1.5 million tons. But at this point in time, it's anyone's guess. Uh, fertilizers and the raw materials are still on the list which are preferred for imports. So though there will be some difficulties in importing DAP and its raw material, we will try our best to get them in in time. We can't really predict much on this account. Urea market is, is expected to remain strong same range, a few percentage points up or down next year. LCs are being honored. Yeah, so far, the LCs which we had opened are being honored with still a few of them outstanding. So we've not seen any, any issues on our major LCs. However, there are issues when it comes to spare parts and and the raw material of our bags and liners. Uh, those vendors are facing issues. We are in contact with the government and we're trying to expedite and uh, smoothen the process of our vendors as well. 
Okay, thank you. So do you have any discussions, active discussions with the government, especially given the IMF program about any subsidies on DAP? We do not, we are not aware of any plans of any subsidies on DAP at the moment. Thank you. If possible, can you share the dispatch numbers of FFBL power to K electric during 2022? नहीं यार इस वक्त मेरे पास वो नंबर नहीं होंगे सराउंड 75 25 रेशो द इक्विवेलेंट स्टीम एंड पावर व्हिच दे सप्लाई टू एफएफबीएल इज अराउंड 3 टाइम्स हायर देन व्हाट वी सप्लाई टू के इलेक्ट्रिक ओके आई हैव अनदर क्वेश्चन व्हाट इज योर एवरेज होल्डिंग पीरियड फॉर फॉस्फोरस एसिड एंड कोल if and if possible, can you share your average price of uh, the coal and the average price of the coal inventory? Sorry, the average price of coal inventory, coal FFB for FFBL power. As far as phosphoric acid is concerned, at any given point, we usually have around twenty-five to thirty thousand ton solution, uh, but then it varies. Our, our storage capacity is around fifty thousand tons, all inclusive. Uh, Normally, it is dependent on our, uh, on our shipping schedule and its relationship with our production. So it's not exactly a, a, a fixed volume which we hold at any given point. There's a question regarding FFL, FFBL power. Uh, can you completely ship to Thercol or is there any specific uh, percentage which it can be utilized? We are bound to follow the, the OEM guidelines. They do allow us a certain portion to be mixed. And we do keep uh, varying our mixture depending on the kind of coal we receive locally. We are, we are, uh, we are, we've tried and tested for coal as well, some other Afghan coal, coal as well. And uh, we do keep track of the plant performance. We do consult with our OE, OEM uh, and we are around 25% or uh, 30. Uh, so far, we have tested at 30-70 ratio successfully. Um, and then afterwards, we carried out detailed inspections and uh, boilers and equipment is in good shape. Uh, we intend to go slightly higher, but uh, you know, very carefully and in consultation with our OEM, which is Hyundai uh, Korea. So this is a very careful process, uh, but I think we can achieve little more and that is where we are going to stick to. Thank you. Uh, is there any roadmap back to reduce your borrowings, especially in this high interest rate scenario? Do you have any plan, plans to focus on reducing your leverage? Our business model involves producing uh, throughout the year and maximizing our inventories up till mid third quarter and then liquidating the inventory towards the end of the year. So as such, the business cycle does require a certain volume of financing cost. Uh, our focus is to try and liquidate our inventories as soon as possible and reduce the, 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 the burden of borrowings and we do also try to it's the timing of the sales actually which which we try to improve otherwise the business model will always require a certain level of borrowing uh, you might the, the reason why you see a slightly higher number at the year end is that uh, is the inventory we are carrying for for dap which is usually not the case by the end of any year Okay, thank you. So there's a question. You must have noticed that the numbers I, I, I just went through, we are using the net finance cost. Uh, we do have certain liquidity on the on the asset side as well. So when we look at borrowing, it's it's better to look on a net basis. So by the year end, we are like 15 billion borrowed net. It's not as significant as it used to be. It was by the end of 2019, the same year when we were carrying around 180,000 tons by the year end. 
Thank you. So, did you book any, was there any downward inventory adjustment for your DAP inventory given the recent decline and uh, DAP prices? Was, yeah. No, we did not have to. So, is there, do you have any dividend expectations from your investments in PMP and FWEL going forward? Yes. The PMP operations are expected to be normal this year, and we do expect them to distribute dividends as usual. Okay. Okay. Regarding the quantum of your exchange losses during your 4Q result, was it just related to your import imports of raw material? Yes, that's it. Nothing else. Okay, so Achha, there's a question. Does the company get all of its gas or fuel from FPCL only? The feed gas is received from SSGC. The steam and power, which other fertilizers could use out of fuel gas, is what we produce out of coal. So all of our steam and power requirement is met through the coal power plant. Okay, thank you. Okay, there's a question regarding the dealer margins. Can you elaborate on the, and what size is the dealer margin currently? DAP pe kitna DAP pe, <clears throat> the, the going rate is around 175 rupees a bag. Uh, or urea ke upar mera khayal hai so rupya ji it's 100 rupees a bag on on urea okay there's a question regarding the, the gst discrimination between local and imported gst that you discussed in the presentation can you elaborate on that uh, discrepancy okay <clears throat> uh, up till june 22 gst Input GST, we have various rates. There is a different one for phosphoric acid and then different for feed gas, fuel gas, and every other input. And on the output, fertilizer was having a GST of 2%. The difference of the two, that is input and output GST, was receivable from the government. That is why you'd see a, around 17 billion rupees of GST refundable coming uh, appearing in our accounts. In this budget, effective 1st July 22, fertilizers, all fertilizers have been exempted of GST. Now there is a difference between zero rating and exemption. With exemption, that means that our end product will not have any GST for the consumer, whereas all the input GST becomes cost of production. So there is no receivable from GOP and the producer is expected to bear all the cost. In the case of urea, the prices were increased and the impact was passed on to the consumer. In case of DAP, we find it difficult to pass on the impact as importers. Uh, importers also used to be subject to GST on input basis earlier, but their input has also become zero now. When we say exempted, there is a technicality in the in, in the income tax six schedule and its tables. So uh, we believe inadvertently the import GST input side is also become exempted. So that is why we are are facing a higher cost of production, whereas importers are actually not impacted by this uh, this budget change. Thank you. So the, the question regarding your, is, is there any update on your contract with SSGC? Yes, the GSA has been signed up till 2025. Okay, thank you. So there's a question regarding your average coal inventory price of your FSBL power. So. Can't really get forward. Okay. 
work out this number. You're saying the average coal inventory price? The average cost of your inventory during the project uh, on hand that you have right now. Uh, we, we've got inventory sufficient for another three months. That's what I know. Uh, can you elaborate on the impairment that was booked in CY22? Like all, there is a process of evaluating the carrying value of all the investments. So on, on based on the projections, we felt that a certain impairment had to be taken on FFL. And that is what you see in, in our accounts. 980 million. Double one. Uh, it's it's 1.1, 1.2 billion for this year. So what is the current retention price of DAP and urea for something? On an ex Karachi basis, we are at 10,380, something of this number. We just had a slight price increase in a couple of weeks back. So 190 rupees. So, what is the GST rate on your phosphoric asset? 5%. Thank you. Okay, there's a question regarding the quantum of gas at MNCF. How much MNCF of, of gas are you getting from SSGC right now? It depends. And are you facing any supply issue? It depends on a season to season, month on month basis. On an average, we receive something like 50, 54, 50, 53, 52, 53, 55. Depends on the season. Oh, the, the, during winter, it's on the lower side. During the turnarounds of gas fields, it goes down. Uh, whenever there is RLNG import, the availability improves. So on an average, we do get around 53, 54 MMS CFD. Okay, thank you. So I think that was the last of the questions that I received in my chat box. Do you have any questions from the participants that are physically present? Then we can post and the mic over to them. Okay. Doctor? Sir? Doctor, well, effort is questioning if somebody else interested only the question. Thank you, Doctor. The last figure of the debt equity, G sir, affected on the screen was fifty fifty. G sir, do you foresee some improvement in this? Uh, the tapering of the debt, sir. As you're aware uh, of the cyclical nature of DAP, last year by year end, if you see the net debt, so we were on in negative. We had more cash than the debt we had on on our liability side. This year, on a net basis, we have around 15 billion of debt, and this is primarily on account of the inventory which we were carrying. So, the inventory is as a result of all the factors which weren't in our control. But normally, when we liquidate our inventory, the debt levels do significantly come down. Thank you very much. I have a question for you. I have a question one thirty four million nine twenty five or a three four thirty five percent. You agree with this? Yes. But if the ratio is very high, what is the problem? As I have said, if you have a broad problem, which was in 
नेट प्रॉफिट मार्जिन आपका 5.79 था और 1.46 आ गया ईपीएस ग्रोथ आपका पहले 133.96 था अब वो नेट पर 63.71 आ गया और पैक आपका तो 0.04 है वो भी नेट पर 0.13 आ तो मेरी जो कहानी है वो तो किसी ने जिक्र नहीं की आपने भी जिक्र नहीं की कहते हैं कि शेयर होल्डर्स के लिए हम ये कर लेंगे और शेयर होल्डर्स के लिए कर देंगे ये तो कमी तेरी सुबह कह रही है तेरी रात का फसाना मैं जरा कह लू फिर आप जरा मुझे जवाब दीजिए अगर आप पे आउट पे देखे तो आखिरी पे आउट जो था ना आपका दो हजार बीस में आपने हमें थर्टी एट पॉइंट टू थ्री फाइव परसेंट प्रीमियम दिया था चार रुपए को जो कि आपको पता है अंडर प्रिस्क्राइब हुआ रहे थे उससे पहले टेन परसेंट फाइनल डिमिनेट दो हजार बीस में आया फिर वो कहानी चलती गई शेयर होल्डर्स को खुश कीजिए लास्ट वन टू मैं यही कह रहा हूँ इतना कुछ करने के बाद भी आपकी जो मैंने प्रेजेंटेशन है बड़े गौर से सुना है उसमें भी आपने जो है ना अपने वीकनेस में जो जिस चीज का जिक्र किया वो क्या सपना है चले मुझे आपको जो प्लांट है वो बहुत ही सुनाना हो चुका है इनफिट है क्या मुझसे शेयर करना चाहेंगे कि आपकी प्लांट एफिशिएंसी रेशो क्या है पहला ये सवाल दूसरा मुझे ये बताएं कि आपको प्लांट इतने दिन बंद क्यों रहे आपको प्लांट बंद क्यों रहे अगर आप कहेंगे कोई टेक्निकल रीजन है उसके ये रीजन है वो ही मानने को तो आप वजह बताएं कि आपने इतने दिन प्लांट क्यों बंद रखा उसकी एफिशिएंसी क्या है और उसकी को जो है एफिशियंसी वो क्या चल पहले मेरे इस सवाल पर वन बाई वन कर ले जी दो दो मैंने पूछा आपसे ये आपने नेग, नेगेटिव पेग रेशो जी पी एस एस कॉम से लिया ले लिया अच्छा नहीं मेरे पास नेगेटिव नहीं आ रही पॉजिटिव आ रही है जी पैग जीरो पॉइंट वन थ्री ये नंबर गालबन अपडेटेड नहीं है मेरे पास तेरह परसेंट का पैग आ रहा है ऑन स्टैंड लोन और सत्रह परसेंट का नंबर आ रहा है ऑन कंसोलिडेटेड बेसिस ये जो डेट है वो कल की डेट वो एट टाइम्स वेबसाइट्स पे अपडेट नहीं होता आपने पे आउट रेशो की बात की देखिए 2019 में जब हमें इन्वेंट्री कैरी करनी पड़ी तकरीबन पौने दो लाख टन तो कंपनी का लॉस साढ़े पांच अरब था और इस साल जब हमें उतनी ही इन्वेंट्री कैरी करनी पड़ी तो कंपनी अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह डिस्पाइट ऑल द चैलेंजेस डिस्पाइट अ हायर टैक्स रेट सुपर टैक्स भी लग गया फिर भी पॉजिटिव टू बिलियन प्लस का रिजल्ट है नाउ व्हाट वी बिलीव इज दैट ड्यू टू द सिक्लिकल नेचर ऑफ द बिजनेस द कंपनी नीड्स टू हैव अ सर्टन लेवल ऑफ क्वेश्चनिंग इन ऑर्डर टू रिड्यूस द हार्डनेस ऑफ इन ऑर्डर टू अवॉइड अ हार्ड लैंडिंग जिसकी वजह से इसकी एक्विटी पोजिशन स्ट्रेंथन करना जरूरी है और जिस तरह अभी इन्होंने बिल्कुल मुनासिब सवाल किया कि इन हाई इंटरेस्ट रेट्स के टाइम पे सब लोगों की कोशिश है कि वो अपना डेट उतारें राधर देन कैरिंग द डेट एंड अफेक्टिंग द रिजल्ट ऑफ द कंपनी प्लांट आपने कहा पुराना है तो जी प्लांट की हम मेंटेनेंस टाइमली करते हैं सर इस पे आप अगर देखें प्लांट को हम इस तरह से देखते हैं कि उसकी रिलायबिलिटी क्या है और उसका आप टाइम क्या है तो पिछले दो तीन साल के अंदर कोई अन प्लांट या कोई सरप्राइज आउटेज वगैरह ऐसी नहीं हुई जिसका मैं आपसे जिक्र कर सकूँ ट्वेंटी हैज बिन वेरी स्मूथ एंड रिलायबल तो हाँ हमने दिसंबर में डी प्लांट को जिस तरह से अभी जावेद ने बताया कि हमारी इन्वेंट्री हाई थी तो इन एंटिसिपेशन हमने उनको खुद बंद किया अदरवाइज यूरिया प्लांट चल रहा था अमोनिया प्लांट इज हाईली रिलायबल और इसके जो रिलायबिलिटी के नंबर्स हैं बेंचमार्क नॉट ओनली प्लांट ऑफ सिमिलर नेचर या सिमिलर विंटेज जो मॉडर्न प्लांट्स हैं उनसे भी काफी कंपेरेबल इस साल दो के शुरू में टर्न अराउंड प्लान था <laughs> हमें फॉर्चुनेटली अवेलेबल रही तो हमने अपना प्लान टर्न अराउंड स्किप किया और उसके बावजूद अलहमदिल्ला सारा साल प्लान ठीक रहा अब 
towards the end of the year when we realized ke market size shrink kar raha hai aur inventory sari liquidate nahi hogi it did not make any sense to continue pr- producing and then carrying it for the next year so it was quite sensible and wise to shut down the dap plant urea hamara banta raha the plant the rest of the plant was op- operational sir is zaman mein main thoda sa apni मालूमात में इजाफा करना चाहूंगा कि आपकी पेरेंट कंसर्न है उन्होंने बहुत ज्यादा डीएपी इंटरनेशनल मार्केट से इम्पोर्ट कर लिया और फिर हाई प्राइस की वजह से फ्लट हो और उनके पास भी काफी इन्वेंट्री पड़ी हुई तो ये तो दिस इज इंटरनल कंपटीशन बिटवीन टू सिस्टर कंसर्न ये क्या हो गया आपने प्लान नहीं हुई कि इतनी इन्वेंट्री उठा के रख ली है और आप लोगों ने उधर एफ एम सी ने भी रख ली उधर से आपका प्लांट बंद करा दिया आप खुद सोचे आप क्या कर रहे हैं कोई प्लानिंग नहीं है आपने इंटरनेशनल मार्केट में उठा लिया लट आ गया यू आर इन कंपटीशन विद योर सेल्फ इसका मुझे जवाब दे जी आपने देखा पिछला साल 2021 वाज लाइक 18 19 लाख टन की मार्केट और उससे पिछला साल बाईस लाख टन की मार्केट बाईस लाख टन में एफ एफ सी एफ एफ बी एल मिला के तकरीबन नौ दस लाख टन बड़े आराम से अपना बेच लेता है हम साढ़े आठ के आसपास प्रोड्यूस करते हैं और अगर मार्केटिंग ये समझता है कि मार्केट में मजीद एक डेढ़ लाख टन बेचने की गुंजाइश है तो वो इम्पोर्ट करते हैं कोई नया फिनोमिना नहीं है ये जब जरूरत हो इंपोर्ट करते हैं और जब ना नजर आ रहा हो इंपोर्ट नहीं भी करते दे बीन अ फ्यू इयर्स के इंपोर्ट नहीं हुई मार्केट साइज एंटीमेशन एस्टिमेशन अभी भी 16 लाख टन की थी अच्छा अब इसमें थोड़ा सा जूम आउट करते हैं अगर तो ये होता कि एफ एफ बी एल अकेला इन्वेंट्री कैरी कर रहा है या एफ एफ सी अकेला इन्वेंट्री कैरी कर रहा है तो बात समझ में आती कि हमें नजर नहीं आया कि मार्केट जो है वो साइज श्रिंक हो जाए प्राइवेट इंपोर्टर्स आठ दस बारह पार्टीज हैं उनमें से किसी को इसका अंदाजा नहीं हो सका एंग्रो को नहीं हो सका मार्केट सारी ने कुछ साढ़े चार लाख टन इन्वेंट्री कैरी की है तो फ्लड्स के बाद की फॉरन बाद की जो असेसमेंट थी वो ये थी कि वीट का एरिया अंडर कल्टीवेशन दो चार परसेंट या पिछले साल से कम है या ऊपर है जितनी शॉर्टेज हमें सिंध में नजर आ रही थी उसको काफी हद तक के और पंजाब में ज्यादा कल्टीवेशन से कवर कर लिया गया और बड़ा सेफ एस्टीमेट था कि कंजम्पन हो जाएगी 16 एक लाख टन तो आराम से निकल जाएगा कमेंट अपने जी बीच में आपको याद होगा वो किसान इतिहाद वो आ गए इस्लामाबाद में उसके बाद उन्होंने मैसेजिंग ये की कि गवर्नमेंट शायद कोई बहुत बड़ी सब्सिडी देने लगी है डैप पे आप लोग रुक जाए हम तक ऐसे मैसेजेस भी पहुंचे कि जी बिल्कुल ना आप इस्तेमाल करें ये तो कीमत पता नहीं कितनी कम हो जाएगी जिसकी वजह से ऑल ऑफ अ सडन अनएक्सपेक्टेडली फार्मर ने डीएपी की यूटिलाइजेशन से हाथ खेचा अच्छा उसको उन्होंने सब्सटीट्यूट कैसे किया फिर उनमें से कुछ फार्मर्स ने पहले पानी के ऊपर डीएपी की यूटिलाइजेशन की और दिसंबर के महीने में हमने मेरा ख्याल है कोई हिस्ट्री की एवर आई सेल हुई है और काम बीस पच्चीस हजार टन हमारा बीच देखता था दिसंबर में हमने लाख टन से ऊपर बेचा है दिसंबर में तो अगर तो फोरकास्ट करने का कोई मैकेनिज्म किसी को नजर आ जाए और पहले से पता चल जाए तो एवरीवन वुड ऑब्वियसली टेक नेसेसरी मेजर्स और उन्हीं में से एक प्लांट का बंद करना भी था तो एफएफसी uh, इंपोर्टिंग डीएपी आपके सवाल का जवाब इज अ नॉर्मल फिनोमिना आर प्रोडक्ट सेल्स फर्स्ट उनकी थोड़ी थोड़ी साथ बिकती है लेकिन ज्यादातर टूवर्ड्स दी एंड ऑफ द ईयर बिकती है आपस में कंपटीशन नहीं है उसका हमारा माशाल्लाह ब्रांड ऐसा है जो सबसे पहले बिकता है प्रीमियम प्राइस्ड है उनकी ब्रांडिंग और है दोनों का कस्टमर फर्क है तो देर इज नो वे बोथ कंपनी वुड कम्पीट कम्पीट विद ईच अदर आपका ब्रांड कितने दिन बाद तकरीबन अठारह दिन सिर्फ डीएपी 
ब्यूटी पार्लर में ले जाते हैं प्यार करते हैं कभी कोई एक ब्यूटी फील्ड डाल रहा है कभी कोई एफएवेल का गेरिंग रेशो क्या है तो आप जो कहेंगे तो मुझे भी हंसी है इतना वहां लोन उठाया हुआ है ना कहानी मौजों में टेरिस रोक रही है तो या तो एफएवेल को आप तो पॉलिसी मैटर है इसको इससे जान छोड़ाए या इसमें इक्विटी डालें आपने अपनी साइड में कहा कि वो अगर इक्विटी पड़ती है फ्रॉम द स्पॉन्सर ऑयली फाउंडेशन तो नहीं डालने को तैयार कर सके वहां तक मेरी आपके डायरेक्टर साहबान से गुफ्त शरीद रहती है तो ये क्यों इस बेवा को बसाने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं आप Okay, we strongly believe that FFL has a lot of potential if it is managed in the right way. Uh, 2022 के अंदर top line में 40 percent plus की growth in uh, in a situation जहाँ पे median household की spending power significantly reduced हुई is quite an achievement. Uh, top line के अलावा cost के elements के ऊपर भी काफी मेहनत हो रही. so we strongly believe that it is an opportunity and it has potential jahan tak aapne gearing ki baat ki ushi ke ilaj ke liye we do have plans aur inshallah by the say first quarter of this year 23 you will see a significant improvement in their gearing aur jo fauji group ki taraf se injection ka plan hai usme mil jul ke we will we'll figure a way out how to reduce this this equity Okay, so since we are running out of time, it's almost 5 p.m. So, uh, do you have any concluding remarks? And I would like to thank all the participants for being uh, available at the presentation. Two minutes, we will do. We'll continue. Ji, Arif Sahab, you want to say something? Ji, my, my, so, so, sir, two minutes, Ji, Arif Sahab, ko KSB wale isko conclude kar lenge. Uske baad hum aap se fir jari rakh. Thank you very much uh, for keen interest, and which is reflected by. Uh, Uh, quite a few relevant questions i think we are committed um, uh, towards excellence 22 has been uh, a year of, of quite a few challenges uh, and that those challenges are still not over i think we have taken a very good start in 2023 and we are very hopeful uh, that things will improve and there are um, good relevant factors which uh, javed shared during the presentation uh that farm economics is 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 improving and and this is quite bright and there with other efforts with government of pakistan i think this uh, dap market or phosphate market is going to rebound so this is what our expectation is inshallah we'll be communicating uh, with with the uh with the market and with the analyst on a regular basis thank you very much said that our uh, our case with the gop regarding gst especially and with supply of gas will continue uh, will continue our efforts to find a solution to this issue otherwise uh, it will not have positive impacts on the industry thank you thank you ji thank you very much attending and thank you so much for letting us host